Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. If it's Thursday, that can mean only one thing. 24-7 Sports Director of Recruiting, Steve Wiltfong, joins us. Steve, how goes it? Good morning, Daniel. Goes well. It's going to be in the 70s today. I have a tea time. I don't know how many more of those I'll have this year. I hope you all have tea times because we're sending this great weather down I-70 through Dayton all the way to Columbus. And we hope that great weather lasts through Saturday noon. Ohio State will host Nebraska at the shoe. But let's head into Steve's area of expertise, that is recruiting. You recently had a conversation with one of the top players in Ohio State's class of 2021, that is defensive tackle Mike Hall. He was awarded a jersey for a game that's not going to happen. Please explain. Yeah, he's still an All-American, and it will be on the All-American Bowl roster. Just, you know, the All-American Bowl decided that they weren't going to have a game this year with all the potential safety concerns that they have uh, NBC who owns the game and, and, and then the potential liability that comes with it. If one of those said concerns comes to fruition. Um, but Michael Hall was able to have a moment with his family uh, with the all America bowl Jersey and uh, be recognized for his talents as one of the top players. He has a ton of, uh, has a ton of upside, and, and, and I think he's going to be a difference maker for Ohio State for years to come. He's the number four defensive tackle in the country uh, in the top two, four, seven player ranking, six foot three, 290 pounds. He's also one of the younger guys in, in this 2021 recruiting class. Uh, um, he's a guy that Ohio State had in camp, and then he's a guy that they evaluated as a junior. And, and I just think he's, he's got a ton of abilities, one of the quicker, more explosive interior players in, in the country. He's a high motor kid uh, and, and he's an athletic kid. And, and then I still think that there's a rawness to his game uh, that makes it real exciting when Larry Johnson and, and company get their hands on him. We've talked ad nauseum here as we lead into the season that defensive tackle needs some reinforcements. So Mike Hall's presence will be welcomed when he arrives on campus. You guys recently did an update on the rankings. One Buckeye is a high riser going from about 100 to, I think, 51, and that is C.J. Hicks, outside linebacker from Kettering Alter, right down the street from me now. I have some sources at Alter that tell me C.J. Hicks could be the best player ever to go to Alter. That includes guys like Jeff Pan Am Graham and Chris Borland. Your thoughts? Well, C.J. Hicks, six foot four, 220 pounds, had terrific testing numbers this uh, summer at the UC Report camp. So he's one of the more athletic players in the country, regardless of position. Uh, and he's just an exciting linebacker prospect with that speed and range and, and, and frame that he brings to the position. I think he's a guy that's going to bring a pass rush element to your football team, but a guy that can also play in space. And I, I think he's a tone setter. One, I kind of compare him to my favorite linebacker, my personal favorite linebacker, in this 2021 class, Barrett Carter, who's committed to Clemson out of North Gwinnett, C.J. Hicks, Barrett Carter, both play a ton of positions on Friday nights, help their teams in a lot of different ways. Uh, but but C.J. Hicks is six foot four, and, and so he's real exciting, and, and uh, um, one of the monster pickups early for Ohio State in that next cycle. Yeah, when you watch C.J. on tape. It's surprising that he's six foot four, given how fast he is. He has legitimately got that small man burst and quickness. So another guy we're going to discuss today, and you're going to have to make me understand this. I went and watched him on tape at your request. That is Dallin Hayden, class of 2022. It looks like he's a running back. There's a lot of tape of him playing corner. He almost looks like a slot guy or Tyreek Hill type to me. I will say this. His play speed is incredible. Just looks kind of small. Give us the latest on Dallin Hayden as a prospect in Ohio State's interest. Yeah, I think he's a top target for Ohio State. I think when you're looking at Ohio State's running back board, you look at Nicholas Singleton and you look at Dallin Hayden. I think those are the coveted guys right now. And if we can talk about Hayden specifically. He's a guy that moved into our top 247 in the latest update. He's a guy that maybe the trajectory in the arrow is still up on him. His father played at Tennessee. Uh, Dallin Hayden this year, six games, 
has carried the ball 146 times for 1,357 yards, so he's averaging over nine yards a tote. He's got 18 touchdowns, and, and and so I also think he's a guy that fits the personality type that Ohio State typically recruits. And, and, and when you talk about this recruitment, I think two teams are at the top right now. You have Ohio State, you have Notre Dame, and I think he's a top target for Notre Dame as well. And I think Tennessee rounds out the top three for, for Dallin Hayden right now, but I think the two Midwest schools have done the best job with him and have been with him the longest and kind of identified him uh, earlier and have been pushing for him. And, and, and uh, I think, you know, it's not a great running back year in the 2022 cycle when you're comparing it to this, this year's class. And, and I think Dallin Hayden's a guy that's emerged for Ohio State at this point. We're going to take a quick break. Come right back. The number three corner in the country, Domani Jackson out of California, modern day, where Ohio State has had some success. Your thoughts? Well, Greg Biggins had the update on, on Domani Jackson this week uh, and his interest in Ohio State. Obviously, he's got a ton of interest in the Buckeyes for a number of reasons. Ohio State checks a lot of boxes for Domani with the development at the cornerback position and just the on-field success. And then the culture that they have within the program and within the locker room. And I think Damani is a fit there as well in my interactions with him. Um, this is a young man that's got great speed. He's one of the fastest players in the country, regardless of grade. He's already uh, a specimen on the perimeter. And, and, and he's a guy that I've been especially high on for a long time. I made sure when we did an article several months ago, it was like 10 guys in high school football who will be household names down the road or something like that. Uh, Travian Henderson was listed in that article. Uh, uh, Damani Jackson is, is all, was also in that article. I just think that uh, he, he's a guy that has that it factor, and I've never said it factor, but I just uh, I really think that uh, he's got special qualities as a player and then uh, as a personality, and, and Ohio State's in there with a ton of other schools, and he's in the intel gathering stage and going to go out and take some visits. And uh, Biggins reported Texas this week, Michigan later in the month, so uh, he's just taking his time, and, and the process is really just beginning, although he did name a top 10 on July 4th. Caleb Burton, DelVal, Texas, Ohio State shot, and who you'd compare him to? Well, Ohio State's near the top of the list uh, for Caleb Burton, who's unfortunately out for the year with a knee injury, but just had his surgery last week, and everything I'm hearing is it wasn't as serious as they thought. He's already had his first rehab appointment, and the arrow is up there. But Ohio, he dropped the top 12 earlier in the month. Ohio State's in the top two or three, in my opinion with Oklahoma, uh, Stanford's up there, and, and he also likes Texas. But, but, but I think Oklahoma, Ohio State's near the top for Caleb Burton, and they'll have a great shot to land him. I don't know if you remember, but Caleb Burton actually, when, when uh, COVID first hit and the pandemic first started getting rolling, he, he actually did a workout over at Lake Travis High that included Garrett Wilson and Baker Mayfield, so cool moment for the young man and uh, had Oklahoma people in his ear and obviously had Ohio State people in his ear. Uh, but he looks up to Caleb and, and uh, has a great relationship with Heartline. And Ohio State's in a really good spot for Caleb. The offensive lineman we're going to hear the most about that does not come from the state of Ohio, Zach Rice. The number one offensive tackle in the country out of Lynchburg, Virginia, Liberty Christian. You probably covered that high school back in your pioneer days, Dan. Uh, but but Zach Rice, uh, I think the two schools that have made the biggest impression on him right now are Notre Dame and Ohio State. And, and, and so it's his recruitment's just getting started. He has over 30 scholarship offers. I know he also likes in-state UVA. This is the, one of the coolest kids in the class. You guys, when you get a chance to read more about him and, and see more video interviews with him and, and stuff as the Ohio State market keys in on him, you guys are going to really like Zach Rice. Just what a... What a cool, uh, outgoing, uh, exciting young man, but he's a hell of a football prospect, too, and our number one ranked offensive tackle. I think uh, him and our number two offensive tackle, Gunnar Gibbons, who's also from Virginia, there's a good chance that these guys end up at the same school, uh, and, and uh, they're good buddies. And, and uh, um, so Ohio State near the top for Gunnar Gibbons as well. Virginia is one of those states where it's the wild, wild west. The best prospects tend to leave. See Travion Henderson, Curtis Grant, et cetera. So that's good to know. All right, Steve. Football's back. The Big Ten is back. Ohio State hosts Nebraska this weekend at the Shoe. Give us a final score. 
Oh man, I I, uh, I think Ohio State's going to cruise uh, in, in this ball game. Um, they're just more talented across the board. I, I do like the way Nebraska's recruited and, and built this roster, and expected them to take a, a, a strong step forward in year three of, of the Scott Frost era. Um, they, they've added a lot of talent in that receiver room, and they have some game breakers there uh, at the position. Um, and, and they have a quarterback in Adrian Martinez, who I think is among the best in the conference. But this Ohio State team's loaded. They're a national title contender. Um, and, and so I got the Buckeyes uh, somewhere in the 40s and Nebraska somewhere in the 20s. I will have Ohio State 59, Nebraska 13. And I have no idea how they're going to get 13. We appreciate Steve stopping by. Have a good one, Bucknutters. Take care, y'all. See you on the front row.